Hello, everybody. Hope all of you guys are doing well. Um, well, I'm doing well, just so you guys know. And today we're here with Yvette Larson. Um, interesting thing is we have postponed, I think, four times. Three, four times is for sure, because sometimes there's an issue on my side and there's an issue at her side. Um, and I feel like right now- And we have holiday really here. We have holiday here. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so we've held it we too long. Here. Mm. We held it too long and I feel like right now we're so meant to be here. So um, yeah, and I would love to welcome you onto the show, Yvette. It's so, so, you know, I'm, I'm so happy to have you on. So let's have your introduction and start our topic, um, more of a conversation. Let's see how this conversation takes us. Fantastic. Thank you, Raheem, so much for having me. We're happy to be here. And first of all, I'd like to admit the fact that you are a young, um, I don't know how to say it, pave maker, change. You're trying to do uh, a lot of good things and focusing on education. That is just amazing. So, so I, I really, really appreciate that in you. So uh, yeah, happy to be here and uh, talking about education. You have to stop me because I, I like to talk about education. It's one of my my favorite um, topics. Uh, I'm passionate about it. And um, yeah, so I'm super curious to see where this conversation leads us today. Interesting. And I am too. And yeah, education is one of the things that, that I totally work on because I feel like uh, a change in the education system and how we educate um, the youth today is really going to make, make a difference tomorrow with all uh, the challenges that we have of the world. And if we want them to be solved. If we want there to be solutions, um, let's just an easier, more respectful way to say it. We've got to change a lot for that. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Let's see who is ready for change and let's talk about it. Um, so I say let's let's start from the beginning. Beginning. So, um, how was your early childhood and how was your educational experience? Okay, so so my early childhood, first of all, I was born 100 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle, which is a very cold place in winter. And um, I lived in Lapland, which is a UNESCO protected area. So nature was always very, very close to me. I, I learned to appreciate nature. And I think that uh, a child, who lives close to nature will also take care of nature. And also for me, it was um, important um, that we didn't have any play centers indoors. We didn't have any shopping malls. We just had to be creative. And, and my upbringing there um, up in uh, Lapland made me the creative person that I am now. Uh, and I think that up in a place where you are not sort of um, stimulated all the time you really have to be a little bit bored I was bored a lot I remember saying to my mom hey mom I'm so bored what shall I do and she said well just figure it out or be creative and I think that's what I did actually so I was sort of absorbing the nature I was very active I did all the sports you can ever imagine so I was very like physically active and and being outside come rain come shine uh, I mean we had in winter time it was minus 30 degrees and um and uh, very dark I mean from December until January we have two months of darkness so it's a really like um extreme um uh, climate so in the winter is completely dark but you have some magic as well you have the northern lights so that was my looking up to the stars all this peace and quiet looking at this green spectacle on on, on the sky so I think that is also making me the storyteller that I am from from growing up there I was reading a lot I still do I was writing a lot I was drawing a lot and for a long time, I thought I was gonna, gonna actually make a career out of drawing or writing or something like that. And I went to school, I went to an absolutely normal municipality school. Um, so I, I had this positive uh, view from school. I was this kind of person who loved to learn, just absorbed everything. 
and uh, was very like driven to learn things. And I, I, I think I early understood that I was actually learning for me and not for the teacher. And so, um, yeah, so coming from an absolutely normal municipality school up in the north there with big dreams. So when I was starting to travel with my parents, I think I was, I don't know, eight or 10 or something. We started to go abroad because my grandma, she was a real explorer. She came home with seashells from faraway beaches. And then my parents started to travel with me and I started to get ideas how I wanted to live my life. For a very long time, I had this phrase in my head that I wanted to live on a tropical island where they dance salsa. So this was sort of my guiding light. So I got, um, back in the days, we were writing letters to each other. So I think at some point I had like 20 pen pals from all over the world because I wanted to learn about cultures. Uh, I wanted to learn about language and how people behave, their social ways of being, design, architecture, all those kinds of things. So I was very, very curious as a, as a, as a child. <laughs> And also very like, um, I, I wanted to travel. That was my passion and it still is. And so, um, yeah, so that was my early childhood. Something that also um, made a difference was that I was, as I said, I was doing a lot of sports and I uh, practiced athletics. And um, I started when I was eight and I finished when I started university, like when I was eight, 19. And those friends that I have from that time, uh, they're still my best friends. And I'm almost 50 years old now. So we, we grew up together. We, we shaped the reality. We did naughty things together. We did fun things. We did sports together. And yeah, so they are still there like my sisters now. And th that has had a big impact on me with, with regards to friendship. Because when you live up there in a small place, you, you really become a closely knitted community as well. So yeah so that was my 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 childhood my teenage days and then came uh, university um, as i said i thought i was gonna do something artistic because that was my passion but then i started to have some self-doubt and i thought hmm how am i gonna live with this and so i thought okay i love learning i i love that and um, then i thought i'm gonna i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna be a teacher instead or a journalist so I actually studied both. Uh, um, I have a diploma for teaching and I have a diploma from uh, science journalism. And I also did 10 years of um, working with sports and health. I deviated a little bit. And then I did a lot of coaching courses. I did a yoga training course and loads of different types because I, I love to learn things. I love to develop. I love to challenge my, my, myself. And then I moved abroad and I lived abroad for 13 years and I actually went to that island and th that's the island here. That's the reunion island in the Indian Ocean. So that was the first place I lived when I moved abroad. They didn't dance salsa there, they danced Sega Maloya, but that was like the first step out into the world and seeing that selling all the things I had except for my bike and just jumping onto this adventure, it, it left me with a lot of of um, experiences that I'm still referring back to, like trusting my intuition and um, yeah. And then I lived in different countries. I lived in the UK for three years and I lived in France, mainland France as well, um, in Southern France. And I lived in Copenhagen in Denmark. I lived in Norway and now I'm back in Sweden again. Oh my God, that's amazing, Yvette. <laughs> um, and I feel like our childhoods have been very uh, similar. With because I mean I remember there were days I'd be like Mama I'm bored I'm bored and I'm like when will that time come again when I will be bored because I have a schedule and I do so <laughs> many things I wouldn't say I'm so athletic mm -hmm. but I was doing today so not so bad um, yeah. now yeah. tell me something how and very specifically how did it come to education why education. Mm -hmm. I, as I said, I, 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 my, my foundation is, lies in creativity. So I think, first of all, I'm a creative person. And as I said, it could have been anything artistic or journalism or something like that. But then I realized that I think I've been like um, 
interested in learning things and interested in how to learn in a fun way so you, so you remember and you want to be a lifelong learner. And when I started at the university and I started to study languages and all that, then, then I realized, wow, because Yvette, I can't hear you. You have uh, people for a day, a week, a month, a year. Can't you hear me? Okay, now I can hear you. Hmm. Can you hear me? Yeah. So wait, what part? Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, what did we miss? <laughs> No, so, so I think that I was always fascinated on how we learn. I was always fascinated about developing and the unlocking of our potential as humans. Like, what is it that we can actually do when we have a mindset, when we have passions? So I think that I was always interested. I remember when I was a kid and I tried to teach my little friends of five-year-old to learn on how to learn to read or so I think I always was like and also one thing that was more than learning I think it was this encouraging like um, people say that I, I always encourage people like um, they feel empowered by me like um, I'm I'm a very positive person some people maybe think I'm annoyingly positive <laughs> But I, I always try to, to work on this growth mindset. That is what my mom told me when I taught me when I was a kid. And then when I grew up, I realized, okay, this is the growth mindset that she actually taught me to put your mindset, to recover from challenges and uh, to actually don't feel pity for yourself too long. Of course, it depends on what challenge you have. But I think this thing about encouraging other people to be the best they can be, I think that is the thing that drives me the most and these days I think it's also like um, coming together like a um, like global community and uh, we have so many challenges like societal channel challenges and planetary challenges and what humans are good at is to solve things together. If you look at the homo sapiens, our species, uh, we survived because of our capabilities to communicate and collaborate with each other. There were others who were equally strong as us, but we have this capability to, to um, solve things together. That is what we need to do now. Like all those grassroots movements, like what you are doing here, all those grassroots movements spread around the globe, super important and working towards the same things. Because also our brain, if we are talking about neuroscience, our brain believes us. If we say that, yeah, the, the, the future is doable, we have to find ways, we can do it. Then we are starting to create that story for ourselves. And we will believe, the brain believes what we, what we tell it. So there is a lot of power in our, uh, in our mind. Can you, Can you hear, hear me? me that? I'm so sorry. I have got no idea what happened. Yeah, no, I can hear you. I don't know where it stopped. So I just babbled along and then I saw your face was just frozen on the page. Oh, no problem. Can you? We'll, we'll okay. cut that part out. So we'll okay. do that. Yes. For sure. Okay. So I had I had a question um, for you. Are we filming now? Yeah, we are. Filming? Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Eva, tell me, I feel very, very passionately about um, helping young people or the youth reach their maximum impact, which to what I understand is what you want to do as well, to reach their um, maximum potential. Um, and I feel like, and I, and I truly believe in one thing, that is that if you have recognized like your potential and who you are, what you're capable of, uh, it's, it's a saying that goes here uh, by a very famous poet, uh, you recognize God. So that is, that is what it, if that's what it's like equal to, like recognizing God itself. So um, I feel very passionately about it. What do you think, like right now, the education system, that be any, any perspective you're like looking at it from, um, how is it right now helping children reach their maximum impact? Is it, is it not? 
let's talk it through. Yeah, yeah I think it's like a, a big question because of course there are several different realities um, uh, within a city, within a country, within um, like uh, within a continent. But I think the 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 common voice, what what um, what we are hearing from a global ecosystem of learners, a global ecosystem of um, of educators, is that this the the general we are talking general now, that there are a lot of things that we need to change in order for education for learning to be fit for 21st century learners. And it depends also in which type, which type of program you are teaching in. So for example, I am teaching in the IB program. So I'm not teaching in the Swedish national curriculum. And in the IB program, we have a lot of things that I think are, are really fit for 21st century learner. We have an, to start with an interdisciplinarity. So we are looking at things like in a holistic project-based way. So we are not cutting out like um, subjects. And I think this is a starting point. I think also that uh, we need to start looking at more like uh, on entrepreneurship about um, doing projects that are real, that are authentic, that are, that are connected to our local and global communities, that we are gonna solve things because young people like you or, or other people, they, they can do it. When, when somebody is trusted, people will step up and do it. And I see it in front of my eyes every day. My students are even younger than you. They are 10 year old, but wow, the things they do. And if you get tools to do it, if you get a framework and, and you start to have a mindset to do things, it, it will happen. And I think also that uh, we have knowledge everywhere. We have knowledge in our phone. We have knowledge everywhere. So uh, we need the knowledge, but we also need to focus more on skills. Like we were talking about the communication collaboration skills. We were talking about creativity. Creativity leads to innovation. Innovation leads to finding solutions and make the world a better and beautiful and more fun place to be. We, we need to look also at things like critical thinking skills, like we need to be able to digest what it is that we see on a screen. We need to be able to analyze, is this a deep fake? Who is sending out this message? Um, we need to start thinking about what is real because also, if you look at digital, the digital world now, if, if we start to look at um, uh, lots of young people are living in the metaverse as well, look at the Roblox, look at Fortnite and so forth, and it will only grow, like with AR, with augmented reality and all that. So we need to think about a question, and that is, what does it mean to be human in the whole age? of technology? What does it mean to be a young person 2021? This is one of the questions that we are asking in the hackathon as well. And we are also looking at things like, what will it mean for, for a whole society if you first and foremost um, educate the heart? And that goes back to your question about uh, how, how can we unlock this potential that we have? Which tools are we going to use? And I think one of the tools is trust. Because every human relationship, the first step you need to have, like you and I were having a trusting conversation now, otherwise we wouldn't enjoy it or we would be skeptical. So every human being that you meet, you scan very quickly. Is this a person that I trust? Yes. Then we can start to create things together. Is this a person that I distrust? Hmm, then it will be a little bit more difficult. And this is coming back from our old brain. Like when we were on the savannah, we needed to, to, to do that. And it happens automatically. It, you can observe yourself during a day and see like, is this happening? It is happening. And so when we trust, we have something like oxytocin going on. We have serotonin. It means that we see each other. We feel that we care for each other. And when there is care and when there is like a mutual respect to each other, that is a very good base for learning. So in communities where we, where we can take care of each other as well, that is also good soil to grow in. And of course, this is an ideal world because the world doesn't look like that everywhere. And, and great things happen in places where there is not that thing as well as a reaction. Um, and then also we need to think about um, um, when we create something together, we were talking about authenticity, like when we have something real to do. This is also something when, when humans come together for a challenge, something that is really, we need to fix this, we do it. Like, look at the, if we think about the times we are living in now with the pandemic, like 
scientists, we can argue if politicians have done a good job, but look at the scientists, the global community of scientists, how long did it take them, like one year, to, to, to co collaborate with each other and bring out the vaccine, for example. So when there is an urgency, we can change. Because some people say, yeah, you know, education, it will not change. But now the door for change has, has opened, really. And I think that the, the pandemic is horrible in so many th ways. And uh, uh, um, I am very deeply respectful for all the people who lost somebody. But it has also opened up a door for, for making, it, it has put us on a reset, like stop, reflect think, what is it that we want? What are the stories? What are the human stories that we wanted to continue to write? Because we humans, we have made systems like the education system, as we talk about it like this, it's a human made system. It didn't, didn't come, it didn't drop from planet B or something. We made it. And then we can also make it different if we want. And then we also need some courage because we need to step up and we need to say, hey, this is not working. Can we change it? Can we do it in a different way? So we need to think about those things. Like what are, what are we, what do we want to keep? What do we want to develop? What are the things that don't serve us anymore? Because this is also about building communities where we feel that everyone has a place, like uh, building a place of a, a sense of belonging. Like it's so important for people to have a sense of belonging, to be part of a tribe. It's, uh, it's one of those human traits. Like we feel good about ourselves when we are together with other people. Look at the Corona pandemic as well. Um, in Sweden, we didn't have a lockdown, but we still had to keep distance. But, but I'm listening because we are an international school and all of us have family abroad. And we are, of course, talking and yeah. But look at how, what it meant to be at a distance for people. We are, we are, we are human beings. We like to cuddle with each other. We want to hug. We want to touch and we want to be with our grandparents and we want to be with cousins and aunts and friends. And, you know, so we are, we are really like, um, uh, we need each other. And so therefore this sense of belonging, building those strong communities, that is also part of what uh, I see as a big um, task for schools, because what will schools look like? I think that for me, I'm looking at school as um, a, a classroom without walls. I'm thinking of, because there are scenarios that are being made now, loads of them from different, uh, yeah, um, both from academia, from business, from different parts. And, and one thing is also that um, school will develop and universities will develop. Maybe we will not have like a, one place that is a school. Maybe we will be very, um, very mobile. So we will have a hub that we go to and we come and go. This is also, I, I see seeds uh, of these kinds of things. Like there are lots of digital schools popping up, but we have to remember that we need each other as well. We need the human touch. I think that being only digital, will, will, we will lose something there. And we have to sort of um, remember that we humans, we also thrive from our senses, like our like um, smells, sight, hearing, uh, touching. So it's super important to, to to be together and create things together. Oh, that's so beautifully put. And you know, I had any questions in my mind, you just like went on and answered them. So uh, <laughs> I love people that I interview and talk to that are like this, you know, I have the question in my mind and they answer it. I don't even have to like speak it on myself so I can be the lazy potato. <laughs> So it was amazing talking to you that, um, so the last question that I have, which is I feel the most important one, is what is it with the hackathon that you have going on about the future of education? Please tell us more about it. And if we want to go to a website or have some more information, how can we do that too? Yeah. Yes, thank you so much for asking that. And I have a question for you afterward. So the hackathon came about because we thought that it was just adults talking about the future of education. So, so we wanted to give, we want to give uh, young people a chance to speak up because we feel that adults talking and talking and we're going to conferences and we're going to webinars, 
but there were some people missing and that was the most important people and that were the young people so we wanted to give a space wanted to create like um um, a weekend for them when they can um, connect with each other and actually talk about the question like um, what is learning in the 21st century? What do young people need? What are the things in education that we, as we said, we, what are the things we want to keep, develop and bin? And we, divide, we divided the, the hackathon in five uh, areas, cognitive competences, social emotional competences, physical, um uh, environmental and digital so they're gonna have some small micro learnings and then they will have a challenge and then we will have like at the moment we have 15 teams from new york in the west to thailand in the east we actually have one yeah and and so they're gonna make short films and we want to um share their stories with decision makers with academia with business with schools and we just want to the word what young people want and how what they think is important um because um, as i said they 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 need to be heard and then i have my question to you what do you think is um what is, what do you think is the most important thing to 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 develop in education right now um i feel like uh, a lot of times um, on schools that I've been to, I, I've been to a lot of schools actually. Um, and what I've learned is they never really tell you that you can do anything before 18 because you're a child. I've never heard that from a teacher, from principal, from anybody. And uh, they're like, okay, so you hit 18 and you do that. Um, and now that I go to the School of Humanity, um, I'm, I'm with them with their summer school program uh, founded by Raya Bidichari. She is a very inspiring woman. Um, and I feel like now that I go to like a virtual school, it doesn't even feel like that. I've got so many good friends and you know, my the head teacher is just a call away. I, I called her this morning. So, you know, yeah. the thing is they understand what approachability means or when you can actually approach and not really go through that hierarchy and everything so um that is one thing for sure i just wanted to tell you a little bit of my background um and with, i feel yes. like education is not uh, right now it's not facilitating that um exploration everybody has an exploration phase and everybody should have an uh, like exploration phase um i had one i was on a search i was doing sketching oil painting, um, coding, different robot stuff, like uh, all bizarre things. I found stand-up comedy. I found entrepreneurship. And little by little, now I know what my passion is. Now I know what I want to do. And then I came to like having conversations with people and making impact through that. And I've seen people that are very inspired and that, you know, there, there was impact. Um, but right now, I feel like schools should really work on facilitating that sort of exploration phase because you need to go crazy, you need to go wild, you need to explore all your options. And not just, I want to be a doctor because I want to wear doctor clothes, not like that. You know, talk to a doctor. I, <laughs> I encourage everybody, you want to be an orthodontist, I'll connect you with my own orthodontist. You know, anything, I am always there to help with my network um, because I, if I build one, I feel like I anybody that would want to learn from it or could benefit from it, more than welcome uh, is what I'd say. Fantastic. So you have created your own community actually. And in that community, you are, you are inspiring others and others can inspire each other as well. And when you step up into that, like, like your passion, others will also be inspired by that and, and find their passion. Because some people, like when they are 13, they, they are just, um, as you say, this thing with exploration is so important. And not to stop anybody, just to be free and try. Because why, if not now, when? And I think that exploration, I, I love it that you bring that up. Because that, that is something that should never stop. Like exploring yeah. life that is beautiful and it's like life is a precious gift that we have because it can so easily snap out of some yeah 
So, so I think that is super, that is super important. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much, Yvette. And I feel like the conversation we've had, there's so many ideas, there's so many, you know, every sentence you say, because see, I'm a big networker. I like to co-create, I like to collaborate. That's what I do, basically. Um, and there's like a hundred people Amazing. that I thought of like, oh my God, Yvette could collaborate with that person, so awesome. That person, so awesome. That sounds very like one other person I know. So, you know, like as a networker, there's like a lot of things going in my mind. Um, so that is what I, you know, we look a little distracted, but that's what's on my mind. But, you know, Yvette, I've only said it to one person ever in my life. Uh, and uh, that was a person from the family. But I, I really want to say this to you. You know, every time, usually at night, I count my blessings when I go to sleep. You're going to be one of them. Like Yvette Larson is going to be oh, one of the blessings that the world has. Because you're so oh. sweet. You've got a, such a big passion. And I'd love to be part of all and any of your projects that you'd let me be. Because I can be super annoying and super fun to be around. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Thank you so much, Yvette, for um saying to me so long um and for sure me and Yvette will come back with other more focused topics because this is more of like a know-how of what we are thinking and what we're doing about education and then we can have more focused topics within education um I'd love for all of you guys that are watching to suggest some topics we can talk about um and for sure we may be able to schedule that soon so thank you so much uh what's the last message that you'd like to give to our audience <laughs> Thank you so much for having me and good luck with everything. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Yvette. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. And do stay back for a second, Yvette. Um, and we will come again with another interview podcast, whatever you want to say it, honestly. <laughs>